Greetings, folks. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today I'm going to talk about uh, some very interesting topics and uh, give you a different uh, perspective on things that you've thought about in the past, but never really understood. So um, the topics I'm going to deal with today are about the mental condition of people. So whether you have, um, and I'm not going to bother about being politically correct, but that doesn't mean I dislike people with challenges. Uh, I have nothing against people with challenges. And uh, in fact, uh, I'm usually on the side of those who are weaker and vulnerable. But I'm going to talk about this from a purely uh, academic point of view. So let's begin. Now, why do I call mainstream academics intellectually challenged? That's right. Stop and think about that. I do call people like Gilbert Strang, Jack Hazing, uh, uh, you know, David Ulrich, Jean-Pierre Massager, Dan Christensen, all those fools on Math and the fools on Wikipedia and everywhere else. I call them intellectually challenged because they are. So what does it mean to be intellectually challenged? Well, before we get there, let's talk about what the correct term is for people who have uh, conditions that are called intellectual disabilities. It's, it's wrong to call those people intellectually disabled. And I'll tell you why now. I would call them cognitively disabled. Why? Because cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. Everyone is capable of doing that to some or other extent, even if it's not as advanced uh, across the board. Okay, so some uh, will do it to a lesser extent and others to a greater extent, but every human being is capable of doing this. In fact, even some animals can uh, have the ability to do this, such as dogs, which can be trained, etc. Right? So, so co cognition is is something all of us as humans have. Okay. But what it, what is intellect? Is intellect the same as con cognition? Absolutely not. Now, when when I think about co cognition in Greek, I think about the word uh, nous or or gnosti, uh, gnosti uh, liturgia, which means uh, cognitive functioning, okay? So it's not the same as intellect, okay? So what does intellect mean? Now, intellect is the faculty of reasoning and understanding objectively, okay? Now, people who are normally thought to be intellectually challenged cannot do reasoning and understanding objectively. They don't have that ability, especially with regard to abstract or academic matters. I actually question this last part, academic matters, because I, I'm convinced that a lot of academics are intellectually challenged. But an intellectually challenged, challenged person is one who doesn't do reasoning and understanding objectively. Okay, Some of the names I mentioned earlier are people who are intellectually challenged. So, and that's that's not an insult, by the way. That doesn't mean that, you know, uh, they're bad people or whatever or not. It just means that they're not capable of, of thinking objectively and reasoning and understanding objectively, okay? So the emphasis there is on objective reasoning. So, uh, what I wanted to tell you now, in summary, and I'm going to cut this video short because, you know, we shouldn't really call people who are normally called intellectually disabled. We shouldn't call them intellectually dis disabled. We should call them cognitively disabled. Okay. We can only call people intellectually disabled when they have passed this initial point or they already have cognition. Okay. And they're capable of doing reasoning and understanding objectively to a certain level, right? So, um, you know, as I mentioned in my previous video, I 
want us to use the right language. I want us in mathematics to use terms that are well-defined, okay, terms that communicate the actual meaning of an abstract concept, abstract concept or a thing. If we can't do that, we're intellectually disabled. So somebody, for example, who believes that infinity is possible has an intellectual disability. Somebody who believes in set theory and axioms has an intellectual disability. It's a, it's a type of person I would call a crank when that person cannot be convinced to see the light. And truly speaking, a lot of mainstream academics fall into this category. Okay. So in my opinion, somebody who is cognitively disabled uh, might uh, turn out to be insane and commit a crime and avoid the death penalty purely on the basis of insanity, because it's not really that person's fault. Uh, think about it. If somebody can't reason and understand objectively, they have no uh, ability to, to understand ethics, morality, laws, etc., they simply reason more like an animal does, uh, that is, instinctively, okay? Animal, <clears throat> animal intelligence is usually instinctive and very limited. They don't have the ability to reason as we do, which puts us right at the top of the food chain. So that's all I wanted to discuss in this video. Let's try not to be intellectually disabled people okay let's try to be intellectually abled which means we must use concepts and language that communicate the very meaning and core of the ideas which we realize okay i'm the great john gabriel discoverer of the new calculus the first rigorous formulation of calculus in human history uh, become a subscriber if you're not already a, a subscriber. Share the news of this channel. And I hope to be talking with you again soon. Till next time, goodbye.